All right. Now we're doing free code camp, legacy Python for everybody, variables, expressions, and statements. Finally, we're done with the intros, right? Uh, let me grab the old uh, logo, slap it right here. We've got this right here. I'm going to put it right there, and uh, let's get started. Hello, and welcome to Chapter 2. He is taking it easy today. He is taking it easy today. He's got his Apple shirt on and his, and his degrees on the wall. He must be at home chilling. Now we're going to continue to talk about the building blocks of Python, variables, constants, statements, expressions, etc. The first. All right, let's uh, write that down. I don't know if we wrote down chapter one or not, but let's uh, let's do that. So what was it? Yeah, chapter two. All right. So what was it? On variables. Constants. All right. Let's do it again. So chapter two. How is the format up here? Chapter one. Okay. Chapter two, variables, expressions, and statements. All right, let's get to it. Statements, expressions, etc. The first and thing. And let's get back to writing again. All right. So, to start off with, what's it say? Constants. Okay. So, constants. Stance. All right. So we're going to have fixed values. Fixed values such as numbers, letters, and strings are called, we don't need a comma there, are called constants because P C A U S C their value does not change, right? So it's different than JavaScript because a const is a constant is like a very an actual variable type, right? So there's a difference right there. So numeric constants are as we'd expect. All right. So this is already going. I mean, how many how many steps and lessons and projects did we do in uh, on the beta on the beta uh, uh, version of this, the beta Python course, and we didn't learn this one time. You know what I'm saying? So we're already getting some stuff out of this that we didn't know. All right, so we've also got string constants. String, oops. String constants use, use single quotes. All right, we might as well do that single quotes so the apostrophe and or double quotes I should say or double quotes all right uh, let's see. I always gotta look down on that I gotta start whatever it doesn't matter all right so let's look at this so we've got print one two three would print one two three uh print ninety eight point six would do that uh, and then print hello world would print hello world. Okay, cool. All right, let's watch. We have to talk about is constants. These are just things we call them constants because they don't change. They are numbers, strings, etc. And we use them to sort of start calculations or, you know, if, uh, if, if something is greater than 40 hours, we're going to do something. And so 40 is the constant in that situation. So we have 123, we have 98.6, we have hello world, which is a string, by enclosing it in quotes. We pass each of these things to the print function, and a side effect of the print function is that we see the output. So, All right, give me a second. This is, this is uh, something different, but you can hear kind of in his voice that he's a lot more relaxed. And, you know, that's I'm pretty sure it's because he's not walking around campus having to deal with colleagues and stuff. You can see, and, you know, you know, because he's, just just letting you know, I'm I'm picking up on that. Maybe you can hear it in his voice, too. Print 123, prints out 123, print 98.6, prints it out. So these are just really the syntax of constants. And without constants, we can't write really much of anything. The other... All right. Those are all the same reserved words. So as we remember, reserved words, we can't use reserved words as variable names and identifiers. I don't think we should write this down twice. Uh, so let's just listen sort of foundational notion of any programming language are the reserved words. And like I said before, reserved words are these special words 
where Python is listening for them, and there are very special meanings. So when Python sees if, it's not just any other word, it means how Python implements conditional execution. Variable. All right, here we go. Let's write down some variables. Uh, where's, where's my thing at? All right, variables. 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 How about that? So a variable, a variable is a named place in the memory where a programmer can store data and later retrieve, retrieve the data using the variable name. Okay, let's read that again. A variable is a named place in the memory where a programmer can store data and later retrieve data using the variable name. That's a hard sentence, but yeah. If you don't know what that it means, it just means a variable is something that we can name and then assign something to. Like we name this X, that's the variable name is X, and we assign 12.2. So anytime we wanna, if, if we wanna use 12.2 uh, somewhere else in the code, instead of writing 12.2, we can just put X and it knows that X is 12.2. All right, there we go. Uh, let's write the next thing. Programmers, programmers get to choose the names of the variables. All right, and honestly, it did take me like a week or two to for that to actually sit in, but variables can be anything. As long as they're not any of the reserved words, it can be anything you want. You can make this horseshoe, you can make this, uh, California Hotel. I hope I don't get sued. No, <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Hotel California. I don't care. The Eagles can come after me. Uh, you could name this uh, Dr. Chuck if you felt like it, right? Just as long as there's no like period. You can't do like Dr. Dot Chuck. All right. But anyway, so that's basically it for uh, variables. Hopefully that sinks in. Uh, we can we can change the contents of a variable in a later statement. Yeah, so like we said, saw before, we can have 12, x equal 12.2 here, but if we wanna come down here and say x now equals 12.2 plus y, uh, which that would be stupid, but we could do that if we wanted to, it would equal, uh, it would now, it would after that, it would equal 26.2, right? x would be 26.2, y would still be 14, right? So hopefully that makes sense, let's watch are the third building block. And that is a, a way that you can ask Python to allocate a piece of memory and then give it a name. And you can put stuff in that. We, sometimes you just put one value. Later we'll see when we do collections in chapters eight and nine, uh, we will see that more than one value can be put into a variable. And the variable, the how we control the variable is through the assignment statement. And as I said before, it's important to think of the assignment statement as having an arrow to it. So this is not saying X for all time is the same as 12.2. What it's saying is take 12.2, find a place, find some memory in your computer there, Mr. Python, give it a label X, we get to choose the X. That's the variable part, we chose it, right? True. Um, and then stick 12 in it. And then the same is true for 14. Go find another spot, name it Y, and then put a 14 in there. So think of this as an arrow every time you see that equality, uh, the assignment in, the, in an assignment statement. Now, these variables hold one value. So now if we have these um, three statements, these two, and then the third one executes, it says put 100 into X, but that wipes out the old value of 12.2. True. And it rewrites it with a with 100. And so we can change the variables. That's another reason that we call them variable. True, because they vary. There are some names. All right, let's uh, write this down. Python variable name rules. All right, let's do that. Python, Python variable, variable name rules. All right. So must, they must start, must start with a letter or underscore. All right, let's put an underscore in there. Mm, does that make sense? Yeah, you know what that is. You can see both ways. All right, uh, must consist of letters 
comma, letters, uh, comma, numbers, comma, and underscores. Uh, and they, it's definitely case sensitive. Case sense sensitive. All right. Let's see here. Let's hear. Oh, here. Let's look at this stuff. So good. Spam eggs. Well, that sounds disgusting. <laughs> Unless you like that, then it sounds great. Uh, spam 23 and then underscore speed, right? This is bad because it starts with a number. All right. Must start with a letter or an underscore. So 23 spam uh, hashtag sign var dot 12. You can't have any uh, dots in them. Letters, underscores, and numbers. Uh, different. Spam. Different. Huh? Different. Good, bad, different. Spam. Is there a space? I don't know. Spam and then capital spam. Okay, yeah. Well, we, we usually we don't do it like this, and we usually don't do it like that. But let's just keep going. Now, so some rules for making variable names. You can start with a letter or an underscore. We tend not to, as normal programmers, use underscore. We tend to reserve those for uh, variables that uh, we use to communicate with Python itself. So sure. when we're making up a variable, we tend not to use underscores. Although I didn't know that. First character. You can have um, letters and numbers and underscores after the first character, and they're case sensitive, but it's really a bad idea to use case as the only differentiator. So in this case, uh, spam eggs, spam 23, and underscore speed are all totally legit. We would probably not use this one unless we were actually doing it because Python told us to use that variable. Uh, 23 Hopefully spam starts with a number, pound sign st is starts, and dot is not a legitimate variable character. Sure. Um, and spam, capital spam, and all cap spam are different, but this is not something that you want to sort of uh, depend on too much. So that's just the rule names. We tend to start them with a letter and then use letters, numbers, and underscores. Underscores, other than the first character, are uh, generally uh, pretty common, and uh, you'll see those used a lot. True. Now, mnemonic, that's that word, mnemonic, the M is silent. There was a Keanu Reeves movie when I was a young young boy that came out called Johnny Mnemonic. It was horrible. Everybody hated it. I liked it, but I was also a child. I liked it. They had a talking dolphin with a talking cyborg dolphin in it. It sounds pretty stupid when I say that. Anyway, let's go. Uh, so mnemonic variable names. Let's write that down. Mnemonic. M -m 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 mnemonic. Let me hold on. M -m mnemonic. Uh, variable names, variable names. All right. I don't know what this means though. So let's see what they're, they're talking about. Since we programmers are given a choice in how we choose our variable names, there is a bit of best practice, yes. All right, because I mean, if you've been doing the uh, the JavaScript, you know that it's you can do whatever you want. Honestly, right? so you make it look as stupid or as cool as you want. But the best practice is the coolest way to do it because that means it's kind of like it's kind it kind of helps everybody be able to read it well. You know what I'm saying? But you can you can if you want it to look crazy because you don't want people to read your code, make it look as crazy as you want. You know. Uh, but we can write programs to decipher crazy code, right? So let's go next. We name variables to help us remem remember what we intend to store, such right, store in them. All right, very true. Uh, mnemonic, mnem mnemonic. Mnemonic, mnemonic. All right. Uh, equals memory aid. Yes. And Johnny Mnemonic in the movie, he was a cyborg that had like a computer brain or a computer in his brain, something like that. Just like uh, Elon's trying to do. All right. This can confuse beginning students because, because well named variables often sound so good that they must be keywords. All right, let's let him tell us what that means. Uh, 
And look, <laughs> you got a wiki on mnemonics. Awesome. Let's go. Wikipedia. When we're choosing variable names, one of the things about variables is we get to choose the name. We get to choose the name X, True. choose the name Y. And so sometimes we like them short, but sometimes we want them descriptive. And the notion that of making variables descriptive is often confusing to beginning students. Sometimes it's really helpful to, if you're going to have a line of text and you name the variable line, that's great because the next person reading your program says, oh, that must be the line of text. Whereas it also can become misleading that line, the name of a variable somehow has meaning. So sometimes we'll have even singular variables and plural variables like friend and friends. And you're like, is, is plural, does Python know about singular and plural? plural? And the answer is no. So no, sometimes we pick variables that make no sense. Sometimes we pick variables that make a lot of sense. This is just something that you as a beginning uh, programmer are going to have to understand that we can pick anything we want. And so you'll see, I'll, I'll try to call attention to this in the first few lectures as we go through. So here's a, a bit oh, of code okay. with a, an assignment statement, two assignment statements, a multiplication. And a <laughs> That's <principle>. awful. <laughs> okay, so the, it's OCD. So I guess he's making fun of people with obsessive compulsion disorder. AFD, I don't know what that could possibly mean, but I'm sure it doesn't mean anything nice. Uh, so this times this. So it's going to be OCD times AFD, and then we're going to assign AFD this times this, okay? So now it's going to be whatever that answer is. I'm not trying to figure that out. Uh, and then we're going to print AFD, right? It's terrible, but yes, that's what's going on. And you can say, what is this doing? Now, Python is perfectly happy with this code because it assigns it in there. You have said, please go give me this as a label. And then we assign two variables, and then we're carefully pulling these two variables back out, multiplying them together, and sticking them into yet another variable, and then printing that variable out. That seems like, you know, we can figure out what it is. You just have to look really careful. And a single character mistake in Python is going to be, True. you know, pretty unhappy. Okay? True, we've been doing so this. So that's one way to write this program. It's hard, though, because you, you any of those characters are long variables, and they're random stuff. It's not very friendly to anyone who might read your program. True. Now, this looks a little friendlier. It's the same program. Also true. Python just wants a correspondence. You picked A, you picked B, and you picked C. And it's really much easier for us to see what's going on. Up, 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 up. Let's back up. See, this AFD is Z AFD, and this AFD is B AFD. So this actually isn't reassigning this. This is a, a whole different one. Okay, now I see. All right. Good thing we good thing I saw this because I was like, why did he do that? Oh, because this was different. All right. So let's go. And and so this is in a way going from here to here is much friendlier, but we can be even friendlier if we pick mnemonic variable names. So this is this is not mnemonic, this is short and convenient. True. This is long and inconvenient. True. Python is happy with any of these. Here on the other hand is another also true. The exact same program. And now you think to yourself, oh, yeah, now I get it. 35 is the number of hours. $12.50 is the rate. And then we're going to multiply the hours and the rate and come up with a pay. And we're printing out the pay. Now, whoever wrote this program is much, is helping us greatly understand what's going ah. on. And that's good. Choosing variable names. A Python, again, all three of these are the same to Python. Choosing variable names in a way that help your reader understand what's going on is a great thing. True. The problem is, okay. the danger is, if you read this and you think that somehow Python understands payroll, that if no, you it does not. hours, that Python knows what hours means. The answer is, Python really doesn't care what you name the variable as long as what you name it, you use it, right? And so you've got to be careful. And so you'll see, I will, <laughs> when I write my code in these first few weeks, first few lectures, I will sometimes write it with gibberish. I'll sometimes write it with extremely short but meaningless variable names. And sometimes I'll use meaningful variable names. And I'll call your attention to it, and, and it will get you. You'll start, when you look at this third kind, it has meaningful, meaningful variables or mnemonic variable names. You'll just instinctively want to give Python more intelligence true. than it sort of deserves, I guess. That's probably the best way to say it. I don't that. know if that's true. Yeah. So, we talked look, about constants. Oh, we've we already written that. Reserved words. We talked about variables. Um, 
And so here we have a sentence, like we've already done some of these things where we set x equals 2, we retrieve the old value of x and add 2 to it, so that becomes yes. 4, and then we print 4 out. Print is a function that's built in, and we pass in whatever we want to print out. So this parentheses is part of a function call. True. Okay, so an assignment... All right, let's, uh, let's get the old pen and paper, the old virtual pen and paper out. Let's do this next one. What did that say? Assignment statements. All right. Assignment statements. I just got the, I just got a, a feeling I want to go on a roller coaster right now. I go to a theme park, but you know, <laughs> weird. All right, let's do it. Wouldn't that be fun though? To go to, it's the middle, of, it's the end of June. It's real sunny outside. Wouldn't a nice day at the theme park be great if, whatever, let's go. Dreams, dreams. Assign a value to a variable using the assignment, assignment statement. All right. Uh, we assign a value, yes. I'm still got the theme parks in the mind, so I'll reread re -read these in a second. An assignment statement consists of an expression on the right hand side and a variable to store, sorry, store the result. All right. So, yeah, I don't, we don't need to type that. Actually, let's type that. Let's do a space and that and we'll do x equals 3.9. It doesn't matter. But 3.9 times x times and then 1 minus x. So this is, all right. So we assign the variable a value using the assignment statement. So this is assigning x this thing right here. An assignment statement consists of an expression on the right-hand side. So this is an expression right here and a variable to store the results. So this is the variable, this is the expression, right? This could be just a regular number, a string, which is just like words, uh, or it could be this equation right here. I don't know if that's an equation, but this thing right here. Yeah, I guess it's an equation. Hmm? Anyway, whatever. So this would equal whatever x was before times 3.9 times one minus x. So we would subtract x from one because we're doing, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, the PIMDAS, right? So we do this first and then we multiply all these three together, right? And whatever x was before is what we're doing. If x was zero first, this would equal zero. And so it's like that. Uh, so usually on this one, we would go, we would put this like in a loop, like in a while loop, and then in the next one, x would equal one, and then we would do something, and then the next one, x would equal two, or we could do any kind of other crazy stuff. Uh, crazy is the, the main word. So let's go, let's watch uh, Dr. Chuck tell us. I'm a statement, you have to really get it, your head around the notion. So an assignment statement, you have to really get it, your head around the notion that it has this arrow nature and that it evaluates True. this entire right hand side True. before we change the left hand side. True. So True. Remember, this isn't math. This is not, I mean, this is math, but this is not an algebra, anything. This has nothing to do with algebra, right? This is totally computer stuff. And this is a thing that just remember how long, I, I don't know if you, you're cooler than me, but when I was a kid and I was learning algebra, it took me a long time to figure out algebra. And what was going on. But then I got it, and now, I, you know, it just makes perfect sense for the rest of eternity. But this is not algebra. This is computer stuff. And once you understand that this is computer stuff, you'll get what's going on. You can think of this sort of as at time step one, it does this, and then at time step two, it does the copy. And that's how you can have something like X on both sides of uh, an assignment statement. And so if, for example, we have X, and X has 0 0.6 in it, x has 0 0.6 in it, what happens is, is that it first, it, it sort of ignores this part right here and evaluates the expression. So it pulls True. the 0 0.6, everywhere x appears, it pulls 0 0.6 out, then it starts running these calculations, 
and then it has the new value, after all the calculations are done, then and only then is it going to put that back into X. True. And so it sort of takes that and puts it back into X. And if you X, do it again? And then wipes and up. And if you, if you do it again, like if it's like a, uh, the kind of uh, f function, if you've never heard of functions, I'm just going to say it. All right. If it's the kind of function that like it, go it does it once and now uh, it's 9.36 and it goes again and it, does, and it plugs 9.36, in both of here, and it comes with a new answer, and it comes with a new answer, and it comes with a new answer, over and over and over again, right? Uh, let's go. About the old value, at this point, this has all been taken care of, and it's been reduced down to this 0 0.93, and so that is what's put in as the new value. Yep. So, up next, we'll talk a little bit more about making more complex expressions. No, oh, that's it. I thought there was more. But I guess not. I guess that makes sense. Uh, here we go. So this is the first part, variables. Next, we're going to be doing expressions. Let's do this. What's the symbol used in an assignment statement? Uh, no, no, we didn't even talk about that one. And we didn't talk about that one. So, I mean, just by process, uh, process of elimination, it's going to be equals. Let's uh, check our answer. Ha, 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 looks good. And submit it. All right. Now we're on to intermediate expressions. I thought we were on to... Oh, no, we are on expressions. Okay, intermediate expressions, and we'll see you next time.